Do you find the rules on consideration in contract law a bit complicated? Well, this video will help. It explains what consideration is and introduces the rules on how to spot whether something will or will not amount to consideration. So, what exactly is consideration? There's no contract without both contractual parties giving something. This can be described as an exchange of benefit. Consideration may be financial or it might take some other forms, such as providing a service. Generally, that's obvious enough, but when you're studying law, there are some tricky questions that can come up in relation to consideration. Supposing what looks like a really one-sided deal is agreed. Can something that you did in the past before the current agreement was reached be consideration? Can something I've already agreed to anyway be consideration? What about a legal obligation to do something? Can part, of a, um, can part payment of a debt end liability for the balance owing? Let's have a look at each of these five questions. The consideration has to have some value, but it need not represent what might be considered adequate value. In other words, what may seem like a really bad deal might nevertheless have consideration. The courts do not need to consider whether a good deal has been struck, but there must be some exchange of benefit involved. So in Chapel and Company and Nestle Limited, Nestle, the defendants, were offering a promotional deal on the wrappers of chocolate bars. Three chocolate wrappers could be sent in to get a pop record. Chapel and Co, the claimant, was the publisher of the song. Chapel argued that they were entitled to copyright royalties from Nestle. To decide the case, it was crucial to identify whether there was a contract to sell the records between someone who sent wrappers in and the chocolate company, Nestle. The court decided that just three chocolate wrappers was sufficient consideration. Can something I've already done, given or promised in the past, be used as consideration in a contract? The short answer to this question is no. It's crucial that what is offered as consideration is not something that has already been done, given or promised. For example, suppose, J suppose Jane agrees to repair Peter's car without any promise of payment for her time and trouble. After the repair is finished, a grateful Peter promises to pay Jane £100. But as time goes by, it becomes clear he will not pay Jane as promised. Does Jane have a legal contract with Peter? Can she claim her £100? Uh, the answer is that she cannot claim the £100. There was no mention of payment before Jane did the work, so the consideration she provided is in the past. Her work was not provided in exchange for the promise to pay by Peter. There are only two exceptions to this rule, uh, but I won't go into these here. So just briefly, uh, the first exception is where the consideration, though past consideration, was provided at the promisor's request and there was some kind of unspoken understanding between the parties that payment of some kind of some kind would be made in return. And the second exception is under the Bill of Exchanges Act 1872, uh, where past consideration may be provided as consideration for a bill of exchange. Can performance of an existing duty under a contract amount to consideration? Well, an existing duty means that you've already agreed in a contract to do something for the other party. Can you move that over, so to speak, to another contract? Look at the precedent of Stilk and Myrick. In Stilk and Myrick, things were not going well on board a sailing ship during a long-distance voyage. Two sailors deserted the ship. The captain, perhaps seeking to prevent other desertions, promised extra pay to the remaining eight crew members in return for completing the voyage, which they accepted. However, when the ship arrived in port, the captain refused to pay this extra amount. The sailors took action for a breach of contract. The court decided that the crew members could not enforce the promise for extra pay, as they were already obliged to work on the ship and help get it to port under existing contracts that were, of course, agreed before setting sail. Only if the job became different from what was originally agreed would they have been entitled to the extra payment as they would then have been going beyond their existing duties. Uh, for example, if, let's say, four or five sailors had deserted instead of two, the remaining crew would surely have had much more work. Uh, so, this principle 
that an existing duty could not amount to consideration was well established in the common law until the case of Williams and Roffey Brothers. Now, Roffey Brothers was the main contractor on a construction project and Williams was a firm of carpenters subcontracted to Roffey Brothers. Sometime after the building project had started, Williams backed out of their contract, realising that they'd underpriced and faced financial ruin if they completed the work at the agreed price. This jeopardised completion of the build in time for Roffey's deadline. So Roffey was contractually liable to pay a substantial penalty fee to his client if the building was finished late. Roffey Brothers accepted that the original pr price had been too low and promised Williams a significant extra payment if they completed the work, which Williams accepted. The work was therefore done in time and in addition, new working methods were adopted by Williams, which were to the advantage of Roffey Brothers. However, Roffey Brothers refused to pay the extra money they'd earlier promised, arguing that performance of an existing duty could not amount to consideration. Following that Stilk and Myrick principle, if you like. So, the court held that as Roffey Brothers had gained extra benefits through the change in working methods by Williams and in other ways Roffey Brothers had gained extra benefits, Williams had in effect provided extra benefit and should be allowed to receive the extra payment. So, since Williams and Roffey Brothers, it appears that if a party promises to pay an extra payment for the provision of goods or services in return for an existing contractual duty being performed, the extra payment can be valid rather consideration so long as the promisor receives some kind of extra practical benefit, however small. But this case is only regarded as applying to existing duties in contracts to supply goods or services, not to part payment of a debt. The rules on debt I'll talk about later. What about a legal obligation to do something? Can that amount to consideration? If someone has a legal obligation to do something, it cannot amount to consideration. Case law examples include a police officer's duty to protect citizens or the obligation of a juror to listen to a trial. Only if the person goes beyond their legal obligation can it amount to something that could form consideration. What about an existing contractual duty to pay a debt? Suppose that someone has a debt of £100. This means that they have an existing duty to make payment under a contract. If the debtor makes an offer asking the creditor to accept, say, £50 to end liability for the full £100 owed, will the creditor be legally bound if he accepts that offer? The answer is that part payment of a debt does not bring to an end liability for the full amount by the debtor. Uh, this has been so since Pinnell's case. There are a few exceptions to this rule, but I won't go into that here. So whatever the creditor says about accepting part payment, that's the point, he will not be legally obliged to stick to his promise. He can sue for the remainder of the debt. But notice that the, there will be consideration for this kind of agreement between a debtor and a creditor when the debtor must provide some new and extra benefit in return for part payment being accepted. Um, for example, suppose I owe you £100 for an antique vase that I bought on credit from you. I offer to walk your dog if you will accept just £50 and forget the remaining £50. Both sides have provided consideration. The dog walk and £50 and you the creditor will not be able to recover that extra £50. This is because I've offered to do something new, however trivial. That means I, as the debtor, have given consideration in return for an agreement to accept part payment. What about offer and acceptance? Click here to see a helpful video on that. Uh, click here to subscribe to the Learn Loads channel and click on that little thumbs up in the corner to like the video. Any requests for more law videos, leave a note in the comment box along with any other feedback you might have. Bye.